Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen. Uh, rest assured, I did check my confusion from the last episode, if you recall, which probably wasn't that long ago for you, but it was a long time ago for me. I wondered if we could get out of here. We can't. Um, you only have the amount of time that it stays open when this guy dies, which did happen uh, to get through. Uh, but also, the map that I was telling you about with all the switches, the, the something grove, the desolate grove, that was a secret level, so we've already done it. Don't worry. And he shall journey into the realms of the dead and contest with the forces therein unto the very gates of despair. But whether he shall return again to the world of light, no man knows. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So the last guess is this. What are we here? Necropolis. Okay, fair enough. Are you strong enough to face your own masters? So, um, I believe in this hub at some point we have to face a cleric. Uh, oh, holy crap. Oh, holy crap. Uh, the dead... Well, that's a good start. Uh, the dead versions of... Uh, the three classes, I believe, are bosses in this. I actually cannot remember 100% what happens in this one. So, we're going in... Well, that was a good start. Let's <laughs> try this again. Uh, yeah, talk to me. Are you strong enough to face your own Holy crap. Just use that. So the sons of the bitches are shooting me right away. Picked up, um... Oh god, they come out of the ground, I forgot. <laughs> I picked up a freeware... Well, no, an open source, I think. Um, map editor for Hexen. Heretic. All these engine games, actually, um, all basically use the same... Uh, I don't know if they use the same engine. That was probably going a little bit too far. Wow, this level is hard. Right, we're using this. Because um, I, I, I recall that Deep was uh, able to edit Duke Nukem levels. So... No. Um, but I know that... I've learned since that Duke Nukem doesn't actually use the same engine as Doom. Or, you know, any of these games. Oh, yeah, don't forget to fire this every now and then, or there's no point having it out. Oh, God. But, uh, it's the same basic interface, I think, is the important thing now. Uh, well, we're out of mana, so I guess we're not doing that much longer. The same basic interface, it's just top-down level editing, and this is really hard. I'm gonna have to use an icon of the Defender, I think. No, at least get us through it. This is a much harder Are than <laughs> the fight at the end of the last one. This this person telling me this every single time is quite frustrating. Of course, we don't have much mana at the end of this. One of the main reasons I wanted to get out of that um, that particular antechamber at the end of the thing was we didn't have any green mana left when we were finished. So, well, I, I, I guess I don't need to be quite this scared. We have quite a lot of crystal vials on our own, which I can't seem to select for love nor money. There we go. Um, we have made ourselves a little trap of <laughs> exploded mushroom poison clouds. I'm pretty sure they don't continue to respawn. Uh, out of the ground, I mean. I think there's a... Oh, what am I doing? Didn't realise that we're still alive. And if we're feeling really ballsy, we can probably try and... Um, you know, draining these things. I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. But yeah, I wanted to see... First of all, I wanted a massive dose of nostalgia, because who couldn't do with a massive, a massive dose of nostalgia every so often? Uh, seeing what it looks like editing these levels. Uh, like, honestly, they, they haven't changed. The way that you do it. The interface to the, the new version, which was um, Z Doom Builder, something like that, is almost literally identical to the interface to the old one that I was using way back then. Uh, yeah, I've got some... I'm ballsy enough to at least drain one that can't see me and hasn't activated yet. Um, that's about as oh, close as we get. So um, let's try some slightly more powerful weaponry. But I wanted to see whether I could get the scripts out of the map, and I haven't figured out how to do that yet, so the answer is no. So far. I wanted to have a look, because I was watching Damien, which is 40% uh, health, uh, as we all know, play earlier levels that I've already covered, uh, and he said that he didn't know whether there was a way to figure out 
how to get away from the swamp key. Now, if you remember, the swamp key was some time ago back in the Shadow Wood. We were in Darkmere. We've gone through the underground sort of dining room, which I was going on about. Why is this dining room underground? What's happening? So, oh my god, he just shot me in the back. This is quite frustrating. Um, underground dining room. We went upstairs. Uh, that's Google Hangouts. Do me something. So I'm going to get one shot with this, which is annoying. Oh my god. Oh, stop walking into it. You're such a bad person. So you'll have to excuse the noises in the background, but if I alt-tab, there's a strong chance that we just simply never get our game back. So, um, probably go and sort that out. Oh, this is so hard. I think I'll, uh, I'll clear this place out. I'll cut. Clear this place out and go on about Dark Moon. Afterwards, stop talking, Korax. Stop talking, no one's here to listen to you. I'm tired of you. This isn't a problem that affects real life people, of course. Having to hear the same person waffle on over and over again because they died last, you know, since last time. So I figured if I run around, pick these up. I said I'd cut, but I'm actually just continuing to talk. I do remember that part. Uh, I think I was run around, pick up all the mana and fire Wraith Verge. Eventually everything will die, right? Oh, apparently Wraith Verge will attack those. Very well. Should I be using Flechettes? I'm going to save it because I'm sick of listening to Korax. Let's just save there. I have plenty of blue mana and not much green. Hmm. I don't really want to use this particular weapon because, of course... You can get them before they even start shooting you. They're actually really weak. At least to this weapon. I don't know if it's something special about this weapon. The only difficulty is avoiding their damn shots because there's so many of them. Kevin. <laughs> um, I was talking about Darkbeard. Basically, if you recall, there were three passages to get out of the trap room when you pick up the, uh, the Swamp Key. And there appears to be no way of knowing which one to use. Like which passage does not teleport you back. We got lucky. Um, none of them teleported us back. Or the one we chose did not teleport us back, I guess. That's the point there. Do these ever stop, though? This is my real question. Or do we just go in there? Um, I wanted to look at the script. <laughs> and I wanted to know whether... Oh, stop firing every time I launch. I wanted to know whether it was possible to figure out, but I haven't figured out how to deparse the script, decompile the script, or whatever we're doing, out of the, the WAD file itself. So I haven't looked at it yet, but it's an interesting question. And if anybody does know, I too am interested, because I remember that section, and it was a pain in the arse. Ow. Because... Um, I think as Damien himself noticed, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Damien and not Darren. Uh, I do apologise if my memory fails me once again. Um, sometimes you can go down all three and it will still teleport you back in all cases. And I wonder maybe whether it resets every time you do it. I, I honestly don't know. And I would like to be able to get the scripts to find out. I'd also like to be able to have another sort of hit of nostalgia for it to tell me you know, to remember what that scripting engine was like, and it's very C-like, to be fair. I mean, it's basically C. But it turns out it's called ACS, like Action Control Script or something. It was developed by Raven for this game. Uh, yeah, it's basically C. But uh, the available functions are built in. Uh, it's quite limited. I don't even know if that's true, actually. I think about that. I believe you can still include other files. Right. We're done now. Let's uh, save it again so we don't have to do it again. I don't have to keep talking about that. Uh, and figure out what we're doing. Now, if you spot it over here, I remember this quite well now that I've shown myself around a little bit. Are you just going to keep spawning? Because this does not make me happy. Um, there's these three things here. Can't avoid them. And I'm pretty sure we have to kill one of each class type to get their... To get their stuff. Anyway, I came back there to show you those. And I have done so, so now I will go this way and not show you those. I won't take that bit min maxi, but oh. Fuck. Oh, I remember this. This was such a cool level back in the day. I mean, 
even then, uh, crushes were kind of cliche. But I think this is the first, this is like when I remember having seen Wraith version action. This is my memory of it. Because it's, it's the obvious time to use it, right? What's happening over there? We're going to die a lot. There with. Just uh, fire Wraith Verge a few times. You can get up here. You can jump up there, despite the fact they're as high as your own head. Um, perfectly happily. Nothing in this place is particularly threatening. It's just there's a lot of it. So I'm just going to fire Wraith Verge until... I don't want to anymore. Run across here, grab a couple of these, fire again, fire again, who cares, there's plenty of combined mana. Wraith Verge is fun, we get to watch the dark spots. We should go and check out, by the way, um, Darren's series because he's playing in basically original style graphics, which is super cool. It, uh, it's super cool to me. It's super cool if you were there, if you know what I mean. Um, it's not that cool because even though retro style indie gaming is cool again um you know with pixelated graphics and all that stuff it's not actually cool don't let me lead you astray in that respect um it's it's cool in an interesting way like a like a museum oh my god that thing was firing right at me pretty sure some of these things were just um sending porcolator things out pretty funny thought there was a spike behind me but there wasn't but it was actually quite interesting now, I think, to have... Save again. <laughs> I want to keep redoing this. Um, had a look at the way that these things were made. Um, I was poking around to find the place where you got teleported back to in said trap room. Uh, it's got a tag. All the things have tags. Apparently control is fire. I know these open, but I don't remember how. Um, all the things have tags, and you have to remember the numbers. It, it wasn't even, it was a numeric tag. You simply had to remember, I guess we should go in here. You simply had to remember the tag name that you gave the thing. The tag number that you gave the thing. Oh, you can push it. I do like this, it's very cool, very cool effect. Um, Put it in your script, and then you have... It's magic numbers, and in programming you don't use magic numbers. A magic number, if you are not a programmer, which is everybody ever, uh, is... It's when you use a number in in a programming script, in a language, to do something. But you don't explain what the number means. Um, now, normally you can get around this simply by just writing down what it means in a comment. I mean, that's okay, but usually you want a little bit um, a little bit more direct association. You usually use a variable name. Uh, but preferable is just not to use numbers at all. Uh, it seems like back in the day, storing... Okay. Storing a single number is 8 bits. And storing a string is 8 bits per letter. Okay. So it's obvious where the decision to use numbers would come from. What am I doing in here at all? Um, but it, it makes it very difficult for the for the end programmer, basically. I'm sure something here opens. Do I hit something? Let's hit something. Uh, but it, yeah, it reminded me of... I guess it, it probably... You might consider that it instilled bad practices, right? Because I, I learned to program in a manner that meant magic numbers were a thing. Um, but I mean, that's kind of a little bit disingenuous. By the way, the poor collator doesn't last forever, so you can, uh, will turn back into a not-pee. Just jump across here. Yeah. I don't know if you're meant to do that. <laughs> um, but I did. Uh, it's, it's very common in something like C to use magic numbers in that respect because C is a language where your your kind of main focus is efficiency of memory and efficiency of 
Uh, I don't want to say efficiency of, of writing the language. It's awkward. Programming is awkward. Um, there are various efficiency concerns to make. But only some of them are efficiency in terms of when the program runs. Um, obviously, you want the program to run efficiently, but you also want it to be efficient to write it. That is not that easy to achieve with a language like C, because the focus of a language like C is to be efficient when you run it. I mean, that's why you would use it, right? You wouldn't pick C because, well, you might pick C because it's the only language you know, but um, traditionally you would pick C. I genuinely don't know if these are ever going to stop spawning, by the way, so I'm just running around hoping that they do. <laughs> um, traditionally you would pick C because you want the close to the metal. These things hurt like shit, by the way. Um, close to the metal. Efficient, you know, no, no barrier between you and the... Oh my god. What am I even doing? Save me. Where are you now? Uh, who did save me? Was it Nickelback? Where are you now, Nickelback? What on earth? The portal has that's really cool. I very much appreciate that. Choose your fate! Oh wow. Yeah, let's stop talking about programming and start talking about this awesome shit. This son of a bitch, right? Maybe we should probably use something else. <laughs> uh, maybe we use some of these as well to keep ourselves alive. Well, that one went down. I guess um, this is nicely apportioned. We don't need to worry about being completely overwhelmed necessarily. Okay, that one was just a reward, no risk. I mean, monster closets where you have to physically open the closet kind of let them off with that a little bit. Feel okay about that? There we go. Right, what have we got here? Should probably want to be using these craters of might a little bit more often. I'm going to keep choosing my fate because obviously there's good stuff inside some of these. Well, there's HP. <laughs> I don't want to use up my. Uh... Oh, oh, shit. Did not expect that. Did you expect that? Well, I know one person did. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like maybe using these crystal vials instead of uh, quartz flasks is a good idea for a while. Now we do have Craters of Might, which is scroll up. So if we get particularly desperate, and we need to use Wraith Verge because we're terrified, then we can. Okay, where are we? Menel Kears to Ah, this... Ah, ooh, I remember this. This is what gave me the inspiration for some of the designs I did for some of the other... Um... Some of the maps I made, specifically the one I was talking about with the earthquake. Ah, not this one. <laughs> okay, understood. I won't press that one. Jeez. Wait, which one was that? What was that one? Okay. Ah, thank God. Give me a load. Give me your help. Oh, we press that one. Press that one. Look. It clearly says to press this one, so I'm going to press this one. This is a very, um, very common early game, like, 90s style level design, where... What am I trying to say here? Let me, let me formulate my thoughts before I accidentally insult the game. Which, I mean, it technically is what I'm about to do. Um, there's, the thing about 90s style level design is that it wasn't that accomplished. Um, it's when you have these very small sort of chambers which are set up around a theme, but the theme is very not very subtle. Does that make sense? Like, um, I, don't, I really wish these things would just die <laughs> instead of whatever's happening to me. I guess I don't need to get in the water for them to shoot at me, so that's good. Um, Right, it's chamber, 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 and each one has a theme, and it was a it was sort of a trope that I borrowed from a lot when I was 
playing around with level design myself. I mean, I was only young. You have to consider in 1995. Well, when would you get Hexen? Maybe. Call it 1998, okay. Um, we press the one that's the shape of the room, obviously. I wonder what the other ones do. Probably spawn more baddies. Oi! Uh, I would have been. 13? Also. No, you died anyway. <laughs> so I would have been taking a lot of um, inspiration from the, what the experts have done, basically. Well, we're going to be using this. Because I'm not dealing with that. And I think Ray Flores can do it much more efficiently than I can. Um. But I'm, I'm really struggling to say this without being unnecessarily mean about the game. Uh, as we, as a society, improved the technology and the sort of the, the exposure of people to the concept of computer games, I think is the main reason that things changed. But. As you sort of track forwards through gaming history, you start to see more and more. Um, I, more and more subtle uh, undertones in game design, in level design, basically. And of course, not to forget the fact that there are so many games that are simply purely artistic, which is to say they almost literally have no actual playable content, which is starting to talk about we could eventually get into the question of what actually is playable content and does this count is that the other um, you know there are many games these days which are quite literally just you're going through a story and you are watching you're watching the story unfold which is fine I need to wake these bastards up look okay Make sure there's something for Rafe to get a hang on. That's handy. Um, but this all started off because I was talking about this sort of chambered. We've had ice, air, fire, and, and water so far, which is very clear about what's happening. There's a switch that's popped up. I don't press, press it just yet. No doubt it's going to do something like probably distrust a great deal. You can see on each of the circular rooms that there is a... Uh, that wall will open? You can tell by the map. Um, and, and you can see that these games are going for a, a theme. There's something that they're trying to deal with, uh, explain. And in this case, obviously, there's four elements. And there's Metal Gear's tomb, which I believe is... The name of one of the masters. We'll find out which one it is, because he's in there. Um, this is going to be fun for us. Might have to start using this icon of the defender again. I've only got one. Oh, it's a time thing. I was wondering if I had to press something. It's the mage. Okay, so the mage is Menil here, apparently. Oh, my God. That's true, I couldn't. So... I'll, uh... I'll keep gabbing on about that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I'm going to just do that whole level again for your benefit. Uh, <laughs> I am not going to make you watch it all again. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate all the feedback that you've been giving me. I'm going to keep pressing these buttons. Uh, and, you know, any more tips that you have for me, I am definitely going to be listening to. And any more, uh, any more shares and likes on the video are also quite appreciated. I think we're quite close to the end of this game, which is why I'm dying all the damn time. And of course, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm much more likely to just fail miserably. But everything that I do. But yes, thank you for watching. Come back in the next episode when we'll be about to fight Menelk here once again. And I'm just going to keep cutting until it works. Oh, it's going to be fun for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Good day.